What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a new add-on for Blender that allows you to do really fast fluid simulations for your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Cell Fluids is an add-on that's currently one of the top add-ons in the Blender market. And so I wanted to give it a try and see how it worked. But basically what it is, is it's a tool that allows you to quickly simulate fluids. I think it's using uh, simulation nodes inside of geometry nodes. And basically what it's doing is um, it's using a scene's height field in order to quickly generate or really simulate fluid simulations without actually doing like particles, right? Right. So you're not creating like physically accurate simulations. You're creating something that uh, basically is going to use displacement and react to the things around it in order to make a fluid look. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that this works. And so this is a tool where you actually are going to install an add-on. So you're just going to go up to edit preferences and inside of your add-ons, you're going to want to install the cell fluids tool that you get when you purchase this add-on. When you do that, what's gonna happen is it's going to pop up an option right here for cell fluids. And this is actually really easy to use. So all you have to do is just click in here to create a new fluid. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create kind of a domain in which things are going to actually happen, right? This is where your simulation is going to happen. And so when we do this, the first thing that we need to do is add some collections because what this is gonna do is this is gonna use geometry in order to simulate the fluids, right? So for right now, right, notice how nothing is happening. Now you have options for different things in here that you can do with this. Like for example, your initial. What this is gonna do is it's going to create a collection right here. This is the initial fluid that lives in your scene. So if I do a shift A and I add a cube right here, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger like this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that rotation and scale. I can't tell if that's really a big deal for this add-on or not, but it's a good practice. But if I was to drag this cube into my initial fluid and then run the simulation, notice what it's gonna do is it's going to drop fluid into my scene based on the size of that cube. So if I bring this down, right? Notice how the amount of fluid that it drops in here is lower. If I make that bigger, the amount is going to be bigger. So you can use this to drop like a big amount of fluid in your scene if you want to do that. Okay, so that is an initial fluid, right? If you want to just dump like a bunch of fluid in here at once, you can use this in order to do that. Now, I don't necessarily want to do that. What I want to do instead, and I'm going to click back on my cell fluids object, is I want to create an inflow. That's going to be an object that's actually going to make fluid flow into your scene. Right, so if I go back and I reset the simulation, notice how where before we just had like a singular amount of fluid in our scene like this. If you set this to be an inflow, the fluid is actually going to flow into your scene like this. And you can adjust the amount of fluid in here by making this bigger or smaller, right? So if I make it bigger, it's going to add more fluid. If I make it smaller, it's gonna add less fluid like this. And so notice how it's pretty easy to fill this up really quickly. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna give the fluid somewhere to go. So when we give the fluid somewhere to go, we're gonna create an outflow. So an outflow is gonna be an object where the water flows out, right? So I'm just gonna do a shift A and let's just add another cube and move that cube over here and we'll just scale this along the Y axis, like this. So, and you wanna make sure that these objects are at least intersecting with this domain in here so that they're being calculated. But what I wanna do is for the outflow, I wanna drag this cube into the outflow. Now, if I click on this, notice what's gonna happen is that fluid is going to kind of flow out like this. So, if I move this over and do a G, X, move it over here like this. Notice how this fluid's gonna come over here and it's going to flow in over here. It's gonna flow out over here. So pretty simple, right? Um, not especially hard to do. Now let's say that we wanted to kind of direct this fluid a little bit. Well, what you could do is you could add a ground plane. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna pause this, 
I'm gonna do a shift A, and I'm gonna add another cube. And again, we're keeping it super simple from a shape standpoint. I'm actually gonna tab into edit mode on this one. Uh, we'll go into wireframe mode, and I'm just going to move this up here, move this down here. Right, and you can go ahead and move these over if you want to. Um, not really especially worried about that for right now, but we'll go ahead and we'll move this up. And so then what I wanna do is I want to scale it so that it's wider like this. But in this case, right, what I wanna do is I wanna go back into my cell fluid modifier and I wanna add a ground. And so with the ground, I'm just gonna take that cube, drag it into the ground like this. Well, now if I reset this simulation, notice how that ground is going to affect where our water goes, right? So we can use this in order to set um, like ground planes, you can use it to create rocks or whatever you want to in here. Um, now, you can also add objects in here that are going to affect the water. And everything I've seen, everyone seems to be adding these as a part of the ground object. Um, so we're gonna do that right here. Um, you might want to use the effector object, but I'm not really sure how that one works. I've not seen a lot of documentation on that one. but. What I wanna do, so I'm just gonna take this Suzanne, I'm just gonna drag the Suzanne into the ground. Well, notice how, we're gonna reset this right here, but notice how that Suzanne is going to affect the flow of the water, right? So if I scale that up, notice how the water is kind of flowing around that Suzanne. Now, one thing about this, this is definitely not like a super physically accurate flow right? Um, it's not doing like any kind of crazy um, flow simulation or anything like that. It's just kind of using like the general domain around which that object shows up in order to do this. So we're going to move this down a little bit. Notice how that's kind of like reducing the amount of water that's in here, but you can add additional objects in the scene. So I'm going to take this cylinder, for example, I'm going to scale this up right here, and we're just going to drag that into our ground collection as well. And so now when this resets, notice how it's gonna use that cylinder in order to affect the flow of the water as well. And so this is super interesting because it's basically calculating these flows in here, um, just kind of using the domain of the objects um, without actually doing any like crazy, it, it's not doing anything crazy when it comes to the actual simulation itself, which makes it really fast. And so there are different fluids that are contained in here as well, right? So if I select, and th these are more materials than anything else, but if I select this domain, come in here and I, I adjust this, notice how there's different fluid types for like blood or mercury. And so there's also a milk setting in here, as well as a dirty water and a clean water. And so I do recommend that you take a look at some of the demo scenes that come along with this because they're actually really interesting. So like, for example, this is the coast scene. You can see how what he does is he creates like an initial block of fluid. And then he's got an object in here that's rotating. And let me click on that real quick. Yeah, so that's an effector, right? It's coming in here and it's affecting the water. So he's got this set up as an effector and it's coming through here and it's pushing the water and generating waves. And you can see how those waves are interacting with the geometry that's in here. It's obviously not like physically accurate or anything like that, but it's a really good visual simulation without having to sit here and wait for things to render or calculate or anything like that. And then the waterfall one is interesting as well because it gives you kind of an idea of the way that this can simulate um, the way that water falls in here, right? So up at the top, this is more just like clear water, but then as it falls over the rocks, it's generating this foam that's in here. And notice how there's a checkbox over here where you can check extra foam, which is just gonna add some additional foam in there. Um, but it's a really good like visualization of the way that this works, right? So take a look at all the demo and example scenes because you're gonna learn a lot from them when you're working with this add-on. And so one other thing is just note that these are usually pretty big domains, right? So if you look at the size in here, this is a 13 meter by 20 meter domain. If you make a really small domain, the flow rate of the water is going to fill up the domain really fast. So don't try to work with something super tiny. Um, make sure your domains are big and everything is big. Because um, I had some issues initially when I was starting where it's just so much water was coming in that it was just filling up 
the whole thing because I had this all set pretty small. So make sure you've got your domain set pretty small. Um, you can also um, adjust things like there's a post displacement in here, which is just adjusting how much displacement is happening with the water. Right, so it just adds an extra thickness or displacement to the water in your scene. So you can adjust that here. The time scale basically slows down the speed that the water is being simulated. So if you want this water to be in like slow motion, you can adjust that time scale down. Um, so just depending on what you're trying to do. And then um, the fill sides. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna fill the sides of the water simulation. You can also set it to fill the bottom. Um, you can't really see that right now because it's kind of blocked, um, but it would basically fill in the bottom of the simulation in here. So depending on what you're trying to do, you can toggle that on or off in your scene as well. And so there's a bake option in here as well, which basically stops the simulation and it bakes this to an animation. So if you want this to be animated and you wanna export it, you can use the bake option in order to do that. I can say I have not tested that one, so I'm not sure exactly how it works, but theoretically that would give you the ability to export this to another engine or something like that by creating that animation. Um, like I said, not 100% sure how that one in particular works, um, but it is there as an option. So for me, tools like this are super interesting because waiting for fluids to calculate is just like painful for me. I just really don't like working with it because there's so much physics involved. So something like this that's super fast, I really enjoy. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool? I will link to it on this page if you are interested. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.